Hi everyone. Um, I'm sure this kind of looks familiar to you guys. I posted um, a video on my Facebook page a couple days ago and said, can you tell the difference between these rhinestones? And I just kind of maneuvered them around the light. And then I said, um, these are which brands. So I just wanted to show you uh, up close what the difference between these are. So first we have a, um, a, um, just trying to see what I'm doing over here. Um, Chinese, this is a cheaper quality Chinese, um, rhinestone. And you can tell when you move it around that it has a very strong pink and yellow hue. But what might be hard to see is, um, how scratched and pitted the stone is. And I'm going to try to maneuver it around and just to see if we can get a view of that. It's really hard to do that um, with video and lighting because of the reflections that you get. Um, so about right there, you can start seeing the imperfections in um, in the surface, I don't know if it's in the surface or um, because if you get it at the right angle, the metallic coating or the aurora borealis coating on the stone looks fine. It's like deeper. I don't know if it's the, the glass material itself or maybe the foiling. But if you get a the right angle and zoom in on this stuff, you can definitely see how. Um, scratchy the surface looks and I think it's just the glass I don't think it is the rhinestone AB coating like if you look right in there you might be able to see some of the imperfections let's see if I can spin it around maybe yeah so if you look closely you can see this pittedness right around in there okay so that's going to affect how much light can come back out of the stone. Okay, so let me just uh, come back up a minute. And um, also, if you look at this stone, you can tell that the, um, the metallic foiling comes around what they call the girdle of the stone, which is the edge. And it just kind of looks like a very light painting of it and of course um you can tell that the metallic foiling is not so good on the back either is starting to chip off and of course just to be on the safe side i've labeled them uh, uh, so i can always tell so this is a lot easier to see what all is wrong with this stone if you don't have a lot of bright lights and also, if you use a magnifying glass, which uh, I always work with a magnifying glass on when I do my TR. So I really kind of see these issues quite readily when I'm working on a headpiece. Okay. So that, that might be like a really good view of uh, right in the center. You can see it looks scratched and stuff. Okay. So that's the lowest quality. Um, Chinese rhinestone and guys I'm really sorry my hands look like really beat up but I have a new kitten and kittens like hands and he likes to play with my hands so this rhinestone is a Czech, uh, Czechoslovakian glass and usually Czechoslovakian glass has a really good uh, reputation but when I do a light test with all of these rhinestones, this had the least amount of light coming back to reflect on my ceiling. Um, <clears throat> so what it would do on stage is it would shine, but it's not going to really sparkle. And it's not hitting that real big reflective kapow, which is supposedly what um, the center section should do is create a really bright uh, flashback to the audience and you can see too that this stone has scratches in it now what's interesting is is 
So I break out my magnifier glass and I tilt this to the side and like look at the AB coating. It doesn't look really that damaged. But when it's going through the glass, you can totally see the imperfections in the medium. Also, um, just to know on the back of this, which I did mention on my Facebook page, this one isn't a problem. I have another example of this stone. I had this on a piece of masking tape when I was doing some light testing with these uh, rhinestones. And uh, when I pulled it off, the foiling came off all along the backside. So basically, boo-hoo, wow. You know, so that's going to mean all the light that enters the stone and goes to that area is going to leak out unless I paint the back. And then, of course, it would be blocked from going out the back, but it might be absorbed. I'll discuss some of these terms a little bit later, but it just means there's less to reflect back. And I know this looks really shiny, but its effect uh, was just very disappointing. And I've actually seen this rhinestone on a headpiece in the theater and it does shine, but it does not sparkle and it doesn't create any kind of flashes. Um, so next up, I'm going to go over some high quality stones. This is a Swarovski rhinestone. I think this might have a little uh, nick or two from my doing, not theirs. Um, I don't even know if it will be visible or not, but we can just look at the colors in the stone, which is one of the ways that you could have told the difference between this cheap rhinestone and Swarovski is that it has a different color profile. This one shines more yellow and pink, and this one has some deep blues, dark purples, and um, just uh, overall super clear. Like when you look down into the stone, you can just see all the facets come out. So, um, sorry about that. Trying to not blind you guys, but this is one of the things about filming rhinestones. I haven't quite figured out how to do it yet. So, uh, things to note here, because we're going to move on to a very comparable uh, Chinese-based rhinestone um what you what you want to take note of right now is possibly this center section that comes right after this a hole sewing hole and also look at the clarity of where the line is where your thread is supposed to loop through so what i'm talking about is this area right here it is very clear there is no um imperfections in it um it's very smooth so let me just give you a little idea okay just so the color kind of quality that you can get out of it okay so i'm just going to set this off to the side so we can look at it <clears throat> in comparison to this one and this one is a rhinestone guy premium quality um, AB stone or borealis and let's just pull this up and do the same thing I did with the other one you can tell in this one uh, when you have a bright light on it the blues aren't quite apparent um, but when this stone is in one of those white cases like this it looks exactly like the Swarovski stone Okay, so one thing that you might notice the geometry is different here is this center section is a lot thicker than the center section right here, right underneath the hull of the Swarovski. So that's one uh, indicator that you're not getting Swarovski if someone is trying to sell you that. Also, you can tell how, do you see that really bright shine? I want you to look at that facet it doesn't meet in a point, okay? It's kind of uh, a triangle with one end kind of lopped off of it. I don't know if you can see that. So when they talk about a quality of the rhinestone, one of the things that they mean is the precision cutting. And that is an example of not 
precision cutting. Also, I want you to look right here. This little area right here. So on our Swarovski stones, the two lines go right down underneath the hole. So you have these directly underneath the hole. Well, this one is off centered. So these cuts are not centered. You can see that it will go up the side of this. Right through here, this facet runs right up the side. All right, so let's see if I can get <clears throat> a little bit closer for you guys to look at that and not have it super shiny in the face. Yeah, so you can see it there. It's reflecting yellow and it's going right up the side of the hole. So that this whole section is not centered. It, this facet's not centered in the stone or either the hole is not centered. I don't know. I haven't really tested that out. <clears throat> so, and also if you look on these, uh, this rhinestone guy, um, this area is dull. It is super clear and transparent and perfect on this stone. So right here and down here, it's another telltale sign that it's not a Swarovski stone. It's not Preziosa, um, because that area right there where you sew, this little area right here, it's matte. It's like all scratched up. So if I got my magnifiers out and looked at it, really, it's uh, scratchy. It's got problems. And there again, on this side, again, you have a facet cut. It's not a triangle. It's been lopped off. You do not have that on a Swarovski stone. All of them meet ge geometrically perfect in a point. So that is also going to affect how much light and how that light will come out. And I will discuss a little bit of the physics of that very soon. Okay, so I'm moving over the Swarovski because now I want you to look at this and this. So I am 100% uh, convinced that these two stones are made by the same company. Um, this stone, like I said, is a uh, rhinestone guys premium. And this is just a Chinese manufacturer I found on AliExpress. And these two stones look identical all the way down to that imperfection I noted earlier where you have the the rhinestone hole is not where it should be it goes up to the side let's see if i can uh, show you that so not all of these rhinestones have this exact imperfection however the imperfections in each batch that i had i can find a twin in one so um there are instances where that hole is centered up in that facet so what I'm, what I'm trying to say here is these two things, I believe, are the same. I have no proof other than what I can see visually with the manufacturing defects. The rhinestone guy, rhinestone, is 134 a piece. Uh, I think you buy them in um, 12, um, a dozen. You might be able to get more. Um, on AliExpress, this is 57 cents. Um, you buy six of them, they're $3.46. That's an, a phenomenal price. And also when I did a light test, these seem to be, I'm working on like a really good light test that I can um, actually show you guys what I'm talking about. But the, the um, sparkle I got off these was nearly as bright, if not as bright as this Wodorowski. Um, and it also had the same color ranges. So what you can't really see here is these blues. So these blues come off in the sparkle. So if you sparkle and you reflect it onto your ceiling, you're going to see a lot, a lot of blue and, and less um, yellows. And I'm going to tell you what's happening there um, in a minute. So these two stones are the same. Uh, I know we cannot buy Swarovski anymore, but I'm using it as the epitome of quality because they have the name. And if you bought a single one of these stones, it would probably cost you $5, something around that amount. Um, I think the prices went up recently, so I'm not really sure. I, I'm really sorry. I don't have a price on this cheapest um, rhinestone here. <laughs> 
but I was, I would not use this in my project, not unless I was super desperate. Um, it just doesn't have, I, I would just be afraid my clients <laughs> would have better vision than I would. And they'd be like, oh, bummer, that stone is super scratched. I cannot believe I just spent $200 on a tiara with scratched stones. So that's why I'm paranoid about the quality of the stones that I use. <clears throat> so, and there's more to that as well. Um, so this is a Preziosa stone, um, also very high quality. Um, the price per one of these is I think around $3. Um, let me see, let me do a little quick math. I have the bulk pricing now, but it is, Oh, I'm so wrong. A uh, dollar seventy four. So you know, yay. Uh, that's way better than this expensive thing. Um, the cut, the precision, the cuts are perfect. All the facets meet up where they should, and I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and um, the sewing holes are perfect. They're not scratched or nicked. The only difference is, is there's a slightly different color profile in the Preziosa. Um, the blues are a lot more like aqua blue, and the colors all together are lighter. So if you sh if you shine, you know, get your light and have it bounce off and hit on your ceiling, you're going to see that the colors have a lighter profile. That doesn't mean that it's bad. It actually might come across as more bright on stage because the colors are lighter instead of darker. I don't know about that. <clears throat> I just recently started using Preziosa and my headpieces um, when I found out that Swarovski was stopping selling and I decided to make that a premium kind of design and tiara and I don't use the big stones like that. I'm trying to use more of a Preziosa. So that the color difference is the only thing. So I can always tell a difference between Preziosa and Swarovski because of the color difference and the Aurora Borealis effect. Okay, I don't know about the other. Uh, Preziosa doesn't have a very large um, color range. If anything, you might be able to get this in Crystal Shadow or something like that. Um, it's like, a, you know, like a golden color. Uh, they might be expanding their range. Um, so I plan on buying more colors and doing this kind of thing with you guys just to talk about um, the quality of the stone and how well I think it shines. And uh, all right. So now I want to talk about just physics and why do you even care about any of this quality stuff aren't they just trying to make more money uh they cut the stones cost more money because a lot more went into their production just from the precision cutting and also all of that you know manufacturing i also think with Swarovski, you end up paying a lot in marketing and paying for when they collaborate with a designer and give them like 10,000 Swarovski crystals to use in, you know, their fashion show. <laughs> That's how they create a buzz around um, their materials. So uh, it is a little bit hyped. But so let's talk about light. So there's some things that happen with light and we might take them for granted. I'll try to go through this fast. Um, light can be absorbed by the surface. So for example, this black mat um, is absorbing the entire, because there's a slight sheen to it, it might reflect some, but let's just assume that it's not. It's absorbing all the color rays, okay? And nothing is being reflected. Um, it's being absorb okay and of course we know that as black things become warm when they're in the sun white things reflect the rays okay so um a light can be scattered and so scattering would be like this green toothpick is um absorbing all the the wavelengths the white wavelengths except for green and green is being scattered it can be partially scattered and partially absorbed. So if something is, uh, you know, 
the white wavelength is partially absorbing and partially scattering, okay? And then uh, light can be reflected. So, uh, and I, I mean that in like bounce off, like the shiny parts of the stone are bouncing light rays off. They never go inside the rhinestone to do the gemstone thing. All right. So, <clears throat> Another thing about rhinestone quality is usually they talk about the materials. Like, is it glass? Is it resin? Is it plastic? Uh, is it crystal? And um, Swarovski used to make their stones with lead until about 2012 when they came up with a process to get the same density without the lead. And without the lead, that means they could be used in children's products. Because, you know, kids like to put things in your mouth and lead does not belong in anybody's mouth. So Preziosa and Swarovski stones no longer have lead in them, but they're often called crystal uh, rhinestones. Um, their density is... Um, <clears throat> uh, I don't know. I don't know what the density, like, truly know, but glass... Um, Glass usually has a density. Okay, uh, maybe I shouldn't say density. Um, there's something called the refractive index, and that tells you how fast light will travel through an object. And that's, that's determined by how dense a material is. And that's why it's important. So, for example, a diamond has a refractive index around 2.4. What that means is that light will travel 2.4 times slower in a diamond than it would in a vacuum. Glass has a refractive index around, I don't know, 1.4. It varies a little bit depending, but we're just going to say 1.4. <clears throat> An acrylic rhinestone, on the other hand, has a density of maybe 1.2. Um, some high quality acrylics can get the same kind of uh, refractive index which is determined by its density um, of around 1.2. <clears throat> also, it should be noted that the refractive index will vary with different wavelengths. So what I just gave you, I think, is with white light, so all the color spectrum. So different wavelengths, and what I mean different wavelengths, uh, it would, might be easy to understand it as different colors. So you know, think of the rainbow, yellow, green, blue, those all have different wavelengths. So what that means is you have a wavelength that goes down and up and down and up. I don't know if you can see that. I'm not looking at my camera. I mean, my video screen. So, you know, like a wavelength, think of a sound wave or something. Well, the wavelength is the distance in between the two high points. So the closer that distance is, the higher the wavelength frequency is and it will change how fast it travels through this medium so <clears throat> when it travels at different speeds when you put light through a prism that's how you get the rainbow effect it's called dispersion it, it goes through the medium and because all the little different uh, rainbow, white light has all the colors in because they're going to travel at different speeds causes it to separate and give you that rainbow effect. Um, that also has something, uh, not that that I'm just talking about, uh, but re the refractive index will also, um, along with what's called the critical angle, will determine the amount of light reflected when it reaches an interface or a surface. So <laughs> when it goes through the glass, that's an interface, right? It's going to hit the foiling, right? That's an interface. And, and I should note here that they add the foiling on the back because unlike diamonds, it's not faceted. So what would happen in the normal circumstance is the light would escape the back without the foiling. And that's called windowing when you can, uh, when the light passes through um, and you can see like underneath it. So if you've got like a diamond and you would never see like a, a color, let's just say 
uh, this mat was red and it had a diamond. We we're looking at the center of it. You would not see red in the diamond because the white light is going in and it's bouncing around and it's trapped. And that's called like total internal reflection. So there is no windowing. You can't see anything that's underneath it. So um, they also add the foiling to increase the refractive index of a rhinestone. So some metal fo foilings. Um, could have a their own refractive index of like 2.0. So all of this is um, determining how bright your rhinestones shine, right? How much of that light is given back to you and sparkle and twinkle and dance. And that all has to do with uh, the angle of the light going in, um, how it bounces and if it gets trapped and then it coming back out of the stone. So, um, there's also a, a, another interesting thing about AB rhinestones. Well, all of these rhinestones have a polish on them. And that's another thing that will tell you like quality of the rhinestone depends on the polish. Like, so if your rhinestones all scratched up or the AB is, uh, hazy, which is, that's what I like to say The this um, AB coating and this stone is really kind of milky. You know, uh, the AB coating on all these stones are super reflective. So um, that means that some of the light, when it hits at a certain angle, it's not going to pass through the stone. It's actually going to bounce off the surface. And you will see that a lot um, in dark stones. So, for example, let's see if I can pull out one of these. So, this is a pretty crappy red glass stone. Um, and let me tell you the imperfections in this stone. When I definitely, so you can see here, there is some kind of gold weirdness around the edges. I don't know if you can really see that. I just saw it on the bottom of the stone. So for some reason, this has like a gold tinge on the edge here and around the bottom. Um, the brightness of the light is going to have an impact. Uh, not the brightness of the light, the color of the light. For example, like this stone will never shine as much as this stone because it's absorbing every spectrum of color in, in white light except for red, and it's giving you back red. There's no way you're gonna get the impact and sparkle out of this stone that you're gonna get out of this one. Um, I, I definitely never, I don't anymore <laughs> because I've seen them on stage. Do not design headpieces that are solid red. Um, you might get some hint of color, but you don't really get that, that spark that's going to carry to the back of the stage. Um, I usually like to mix it in with crystals that will catch the light. Um, so I don't do, and this is the same with like dark blue. Um, the lighter colors like a light pink or a light blue or anything like that tend to still give you that spark. Uh, but dark stones will not do that. Um, and also like, I, I can't wait to do a light test on this. I'm hoping I do not have any more Sporovsky stones like this. Um, it's just one of those things that I ordered on a per need basis and I didn't keep them in stock. And all I have are my emergency stones. So I won't be able to do a comparison with these. Um, so that's a bummer. Not unless someone has a dark cyan 20 by 18 stone, they'd like to send me in the mail and then I could do a comparison. Um, Anyway, so when you do that same light test that I do with these, getting the rhinestone sparkle to bounce off onto the ceiling, I, yeah, you can't really see this red. It's not doing anything. It's just kind of like a hazy thing up there. But why I was mentioning this is sometimes you see white. Well, 
white is not coming from the interior of the stone. When a dark stone sparkles, air quote, <laughs> okay, because it's not really a sparkle at this point, it's white light that has bounced off this shiny surface. Okay, so you can see sometimes a little white flash will pop in on this stone. That's white light bouncing off the or reflecting off the surface. It did not go through the stone. So you will have a certain percentage of light that bounces off the surface and a certain percentage that goes into the stone. And then you you want all of it to come back out at you. So that's why some of these stones will look different. Um, is that all I have on the light? Yeah, so lighter colored objects emit more light than darker colored objects because it absorbs light. Um, and I think that's like the basics of these. And why I'm, why I'm saying this is because acrylic rhinestones, maybe to your naked eye, 10 to 20 feet away or across your living room, you're going to think, that it is just as good as a better quality stone. But when you get on stage, it's not 20 feet anymore. And that light needs to be bright to carry out into the audience and to be seen. Um, so smaller theaters you could probably use. Um, honestly, I like all the stones. Uh, I don't buy a lot of acrylic stones or anything else, but I do buy some really interesting rhinestones that I know are not there for sparkle, but are there for texture, um, like this rhinestone here. Uh, well, whatever. It's a glass cubby. It's just a glass little thing. It gives texture and color to the piece. You might not want to bling out your costume in all sort of see, I think it's too overpowering, and I like to see um, texture of sparkle in costumes. So, glitter has a different look than sequins, and the acrylic stones shine, but they're not that distracting sparkle like pow in your face. So it's it's really subtle, and you can create a lot of really nice textures with light in your bigger costumes using um, different types of materials. So, you know, sometimes I have some of these and, um, you know, I use darker stones to create like some texture and depth. I know that it's not going to be like pow in your face, but I don't want, in some cases, you might want it in some cases, a bunch of Blam, 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 blam. And what I'm talking about, blam, 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 which I can't show you here. And you can really tell uh, sometimes the quality of the stone, especially if you're watching video, um, because you can just pause it and look at it. <laughs> so you guys know, like when you look at a bright source of light and it's got the little, you know, little starry points coming off of it. Um, that's called, I think, radial spikes or diffraction spikes or something to this nature. It's mainly a, a camera app. It's a camera thing. It's producing this effect. Your eyeballs and eyelashes even produce this. Um, but if a stone is not really bright, like it's not bringing back a lot, all of the light that it's received, it's not, or it's not getting a lot of light. <laughs> That's another option. Um, you're not going to see those little radial spikes coming off of your stones. Uh, it's just not bright enough to do that. Um, so, yeah, use different materials. Like, I'm really, I, I really want to play with more texture in my headpieces and not just be like all blingy bling all the time. Um, so I have a cat that's got his paws underneath the uh, door trying to get in. Anyway, so I'm not saying like, oh, you used acrylic rhinestones. Your stuff sucks. 
that's not at all what I'm saying. Uh, you might not want to spend the money on it. Maybe it's not going to be used very often. Maybe you're going to be performing in a small theater. You don't have to worry about it being like a two 2,500 seat auditorium. And it's got to, you know, have some kind of presence in the back. I've really have never seen a rhinestone headpiece really shine really super bright all the way in the back of the theater, but you can see maybe some glimmers and usually they're the bigger stones that do the glimmer for very large theaters. So you have to decide, like, I don't, I think it would be really nice for like characters like Esmeralda, who is not a princess. You might want to still bring in some shine and some texture in the costume, but you don't want it to look like she's draped in diamonds because she's not a princess. She's not a princess. She's a gypsy. Anyways, uh, so I don't really like making tiaras for Esmeralda or shiny sparkly things because I, it just doesn't feel like the character to me. So, but I do it because I have clients that ask me for it, but I'm always like, I don't know if this is what Esmeralda would wear, <laughs> but that's another point altogether. Uh, so yeah. And you know, these Chinese stones, which I have not seen these on stage. I just got these. I just started trying to find some replacements for Swarovski that weren't necessarily Preziosa because Preziosa has such a limited color range. I need to start looking for um, another brand of rhinestone. And I'm going to get some of these in different colors I would I can share with you. Um, Hopefully by then I'll also have my little light thing that I can show you so you can see the difference when these things reflect off the surface and bounce onto a ceiling that's, you know, probably 15 feet away. You can definitely see how bright or dim it is. And, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into what you're going to see on stage, uh, even when you're sitting in an auditorium or when you're watching a video, especially because there's another layer of what is corrupting what you see, you have the angle of the lights, you have the color of the light that the dancers are lit with, um, you have the angle the dancer is wearing their headpiece at, um, you also have various different people sitting in different places in the auditorium, so everyone's going to have a different uh, visual angle. So that's going to affect how much they see reflects, especially, you know, depending on how your headpiece is designed, maybe they never see it. Like if you've ever saw a uh, sat in the orchestra and the stage is up above you, I can't see what on, is on someone's head not unless they're doing a ponche or something. So uh, all of those are factors. And then of course, if you have, if you're watching a film of something that you've made, um, you can change the white balance. There's all kinds of things that you can do on the camera. You can open the aperture. It can be too dark when the theater wasn't lit that dark. So everything looks super duper dark. Um, that kind of thing. The only other thing that I just wanted to say, like, let's say you make a tiara all in red. And this is going back on a thing of colors. And you lit this head this stone with green light. It's going to be black. You know, so if I took one of these uh, green, I don't have just super green. So who knows what I'm going to get out of this. It's not a pure green. Uh, so, you know, if I took a Sharpie and I colored this, it's going to look black. All right. That, that's the same thing with the light. So you can have these kind of things playing where you've got this bright, brilliant stone, but you have a, a low energy wavelength going into the stone that's the only thing it's got to reflect back so it's going to affect the brilliance so that's my talk my ted talk or not my ted talk about rhinestones um there's a lot of complicated things going on with them um i think the most important thing is is the when you're buying them is the quality of the foil backing is very important oh let me tell you something else that you can tell that this is not Swarovski. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you, but uh, if you look at this part, which is 
kind of the girdle on the stone. Um, you can tell that it's not Swarovski because it is um, wavy. I don't know if you can see that, especially like where my thumb is. If you see that, that's wavy. You're not going to get that on a Preziosa stone. It's going to be nice and smooth. And the same thing with the Swarovski stone. And also you can sometimes tell the difference in these stones um, definitely by the hole size like I don't know what it is um, the hole sizes on these Chinese stones are really stingy so sometimes like it can get hard to work with your wire and get them uh, very well connected to your TR when you get like four passings through and that's about all that you're going to get and you know, if it flakes or chips off the back, um, that's a problem. I did. <clears throat> also, the hardness of the stone is going to um, give you some longevity. I know that I did a um, order of the rhinestone guys. Three of these were absolutely shattered. I think I have a picture of those on um, my Facebook page when I received them. I don't know what happened in shipping, but it's like a truck ran over them or something. But um, the Preziosa uh, stones, which were in a little plastic thing underneath it, uh, the ones that were um, crushed, these that were crushed, nicked the top of this. So the, there's different hardnesses. So, you know, like... <laughs> I hope no one's TR ever gets ran over by a car, but they can break, they can chip, you know, who knows what happens if this fell on a concrete floor from a certain amount of distance. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll do some testing. Also, it could make it more prone to the surface scratching. Um, another thing to be aware of with acrylic stones is um, some, you can either color the plastic or you can dye the dye the top, okay. Um, if it's been dyed on the top, once it scratches off, uh, it's like looks really bad. Um, so that's one thing is that, and that's the same thing with AB coatings too. They can get scratched, but it's a real bummer when it's a colored stone because to me it sticks out a lot more then maybe just a scratch on an AB coating. So if you're looking for, you know, well, what's the bare minimum, a good foil backing, you're going to want that. And uh, I had one time my E6, I did use some, um, I don't remember if they were acrylic or just some really cheap glass stones. I had to get a particular color and this was the only stones that I could get. I glued them onto my headpiece and the foil, the, um, the rhinestone, well, the colored part came off of the foil. And, well, <laughs> that was a heart attack. So I hope for the best. I put another one over top the foil and just said, I hope this sticks. And I guess it has because no one has told me your rhinestone fell off and the foiling is there. So that's good. Uh, so you kind of want a really nice um, backing. That's what is, that's what light is. I mean, without that foil backing, you don't have really a rhinestone. All you're going to get is the reflection off the surface. I don't think you're going to be able to get that critical angle where a critical angle is. It goes into the rhinestone at an angle and there's, uh, there's math behind this physics. <laughs> we don't need to go into that. It goes into the rhinestone, it hits a surface, and then if it meets this angle, it will leave the rhinestone and go back, or gemstone and come back to you. Otherwise, it just might bounce around. The goal is for it to get trapped in there, bounce around, create a lot of light and dance, and then eventually escape from the front and not do things like leak out the side or you know, have this weird color bleeding that I have going on with this or, you know, go out the back. So if this was not there, your rhinestones would be useless. So the foil backing is quite important. Um, and then, of course, a, a perfect surface is always important as well, in my opinion, because if it's scratched or if there's imperfections or stuff. Now, I'm sure these facet cuts being 
um, not perfect, which I'm looking at this right now, it probably will affect how much light is being, you know, lost or, you know, leaving in areas that shouldn't like out the side or something weird like that. I don't know. I guess I could sit down with some calculator and some physics equations and maybe figure it out. Uh, but then I'd have to measure all these surfaces and I, I'd rather make a TR. Anyways, so that is my, again, I'll say this one last time. That's my TED Talk. Um, play with all the materials and see what you like. Um, if you can, you know, donate. It, try something out with something. I've done this. I've made some headpieces. I want to see what they look on stage. So I give them to a local studio or someone that I know and I know that they're going to perform with them on and they're kind of like my guinea pig so um, that's how I get to see how a lot of these things will look on stage um, before I decide what I'm going to make and sell to people so anyways thank you for joining me and I hope you have a great day